Give me just a second here, everybody on Zoom. There we go. All right, everybody. Hey, welcome to Note Night in America. We are glad to have each and everybody join us here. We've got a very special call tonight. If you're listening to the pop, the replay of this, great. Make sure you type in your questions, comment. I always make sure to watch the, the questions and comments that are coming from, from the replay. If you're listening to the podcast, which you can on the Note Night in America podcast or any of the Note Night uh, or any places that you get your podcast, feel free to type in questions or uh, set up a phone call with me at talkwithscottcarson.com. But we've been doing this for a while. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, as we were kind of the pre-call, was that we haven't done a, a large pool breakdown in a couple months. We're like, hey, we need to get back into doing this just because everybody keeps asking me questions. Um, and we'll dive into the, some, some specifics. But a little bit of here before we get rock and roll, guys. Welcome to Note Night in America. If you're watching on YouTube, you can register for all the Note Nights by going to notenightinamerica.com. We've been really good about doing this now uh, for 13 plus years. This year, we haven't been doing so many lives just because I know people will go and listen to the calls. And so we pre-record them a little bit, but this one is actually live. We're actually doing this live. I think it's like one of the um, four or five that we've done live so far this year. But we've been doing Note Night in America for over 13 years. Hard to believe. This will be actually episode 166 on the podcast. Obviously, we've had much more than 166 times, but you can catch the Note Night in America playlist on our number one YouTube channel. And uh, you can always subscribe for that by going to weclosenotes.tv and they'll take you straight to our YouTube channel. Got questions as always. Our easiest link to remember to talk with me, talkwithscottcarson.com. Very simple, very easy to remember. We've even got it down here on my signature here in the Zoom link on my smiling face here on Monday night here. Hope you all had a great Monday. Um, we caught the eclipse today, had a great weekend. And decided to do this webinar tonight on this tape because I spent some time Sunday with one of my uh, one of my coaching students going through this tape. We got him Tuesday or Wednesday for one of our traders. Um, you can cherry pick this. He was like, I really kind of overwhelmed. Do you mind spending the time going through? I was like, no, this will be great. It'll help me prep for what I saw tonight. And I, I went through it with him. And I was like, wait, this is a good enough tape to do it live with everybody, to give everybody a chance and what we went through. And there's some different uh, things on this tape that I would throw most people for a loop if you didn't understand it. So hang around. I promise we won't be here for four hours. We'll probably be here right about an hour on the call, maybe a little bit longer, depending on what we get into. It might be a little bit shorter because um, I'm a little bit more familiar with this. And uh, we're not having to take a break for somebody to go flip the, the chicken or the barbecue <laughs> like we were on Sunday. Uh, but give you a bit of the idea of the tape details. It is 345 first liens, okay, 345 specific. And they are, are um, most of these are performing. Now, the, you know, most of them are performing. There are some 30-day lates, some 60-day lates. I think there's one or two 90-day lates. But overwhelmingly, most of these are performing. They literally even provided the last 12 months of cash flow, of payment history in the spreadsheet. And that's dated from February of this year to, you know, through uh, March of last year. So the rolling 12 months, it is obviously April. We didn't have the March. This tape was created at the end of March. So I didn't have all the March stuff in there. So that's that's okay. But relatively what I would call a relatively newer tape. Now, the seller was accepting bids last week. Um, in the middle of the week, and I had my coaching student reach out to him this morning and said, hey, call and find out. Because if there's 345, the last thing you want to do is make offers on 20 that already have bids on. You know what I mean? And what's funny, he got back a cryptic message. Though, oh, we'll accept your bids. And I'm like, well, that means that, A, either they didn't get a lot of bids, which is what I think, or B, they're still in the process. They haven't heard back from the seller yet. So that's Okay. Um, it means that there's an opportunity. If you're a part of our WC and crew, our monthly membership, um, the link was actually, the, the spreadsheet was uploaded this morning. We didn't have our normal uh, Monday coaching call, but the link, I mean, actually the, the Excel spreadsheet, everything was uploaded to the base camp group for you guys to take a look at, okay? So um, don't ask me specific questions that are all off the board. Uh, I'm going to do like I normally do with our classes. Please stay on task. Uh, if you have a question about something that pops up, a column, something mean, something I say, ask a question. But please don't don't ask me about some weird asset way the heck over in, in Dodge. OK. Hey, David Austin. Good to see you, buddy. 
Uh, glad to have you on um, the YouTube channel. If you're going to ask questions also on YouTube, uh, ask them. I will be glad to get to them, but I may not get into them quite as accurate. So if you do ask on YouTube, please make them as specific as possible as for you. Um, these are all mostly small balance uh, notes with high equity. Okay, so to give you a bit of the rundown on the small balance with high equity, uh, they're in 39 states, but the balance is UPB, smallest one was just under a thousand, and legal balances, everything like that, because they're since these all have equity, they're looking to legal balance. This is about $110,000 is the highest legal balance, so it's not bad. Um, fair market values from anywhere from 35,000 up to 900,000. Okay, they are with a servicer. And the seller was nice enough to mention to us on the front end that some of these notes have collateral issues. And you know, there's actually a couple columns in the spreadsheet that break down, hey, this is an issue. This is an issue. And they want you making your bid with the idea of that issue in mind so that you're not having to reprice your bid once you're going through due diligence. Now, this is all upfront, okay? If you're new to these calls, I apologize because I'm probably going to mention some things that don't quite make sense sometimes if you haven't gone through our three-day workshop or even our one day on note weekend class, okay? So um, I'm going to try to take it as slow as possible. Uh, I'm going to make sure and share my screen. We are primarily going to be working in Excel uh, over the next at least 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes is a breakdown here. I'll try to boost, make it bigger so you guys can see it. Um, if you're curious about it, then get signed up for a monthly membership or take our class or sign up for our coaching if you want more of a hand-holding approach to this, Okay. But here is the map. We mapped this in Batch Geo. This does not include the couple that are over in the Hawaiian Islands. Gives you a reason to fly out to Hawaii for some due diligence. So I might just have to do that. <laughs> but this is a, we use Batch Geo. This is only 250 or 249 of the 345. There's still 100 that didn't map on here. As you can see, it is a wide diversified of stuff all across the country. Okay. It might have made more sense for me to go ahead and pick the states that most people are buying in. And then just map those. Uh, but I wanted to give you a no BS approach to the map of where everything's at. So I just took the first 250 assets that came to me from the tape, mapped them, and that's where we're at. But it's all across the board there for you, okay? And we'll dive into that in a little bit. So that's about as close as I'm going to get into mapping until the very end. Uh, if you want to learn more, hey, sign up for our next three-day note buying uh, workshop, notebuyingfordummies.com. It's June 21st, 23rd. That's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And go back to school in some summer school, June 21st, 22nd, 23rd. It's recorded. If you sign up for the Note Buying for Dummies class in June, you'll get the replays, the class from just a couple of weeks ago, and be able to start watching and learning that as well, along with the accountability coach you may have with that. And we'll probably actually even uh, include this um, video as a um, video in that re recording so that folks can see us go through some tapes. Hey, Mr. K, good to see you, buddy, as well as always. All right. So any questions, any comments about this before we dive into um, looking at the due diligence? If you have a question, now's a good time to ask it before we roll up my sleeves and get to work. So good to see Chris, Don, Jerry, Jessica. Hey, Jessica, good to see you as always. John, Lisa, Stephen, Serby, Mr. K, Dave. We've got a bunch of folks watching online. Some folks that are on here. Great. All right, good. Who knows you're going to watch the replay. But anyway, if you're watching the replay, and say, hey. <laughs> I always like to know who's on there. But anyway, let's get into the big, oh, that's the 30-30 market major slide. We don't need that. So let's go now to the new share of the tape. Okay. So this tape here, the only thing that's been edited with it since I got it was actually they had three lines across the top that talked about WAC, which is stands for weighted average coupon and weighted average maturity date. Don't really need to worry about that right now. Okay. Question here. Um, yeah, Stephen, you got the links to it's in base camp for you, buddy. You should know that by now. All right. So let's start at the left. Actually, let me do this. Let me blow this up a little bit bigger for you. I'm trying to get it a little bit more. Well, I don't want to go a little smaller. I want to go bigger. Let's try that. Okay. It might make it a little more difficult for me, but not. So to give you a bit of an idea, you've got loan number. Obviously, that's the loan number of the servicing. The servicing company is PHL. Here's the thing they included in here. The collateral or compliance issue identified columns all the way to the back end of the tape uh, columns BD to BK. X means there's issues. Okay. 
Uh, DQ status, delinquency status, current 30 to 59, current, 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 current. Lean position, these are all first lean positions. Okay. Borrower's name, um, current interest rate, uh, maturity dates. We'll, we'll get to that later on. So you can see some of these maturity dates are anywhere from 2063 <laughs> all the way down to 2021. Some of these are defaulted that have been obviously extended or fair forbearance agreement. That's just fine. Um, current UPB, UPB stands for unpaid principal balance. The deferred UPB is usually a sign if it's been deferred that it's been modified or um, the borrowers work to reinstate or in some sort of payment plan. The estimated payoff as of March 1st, that's the total legal balance. You hear that say in most cases, but the estimated payoff is that number. And that's numbers that we'll be going off of because most of these all have a higher UPB than uh, a higher payoff than the current UPB. The values are all higher than the uh, estimated payoff too. Property addresses, okay. Um, all across the country, you got some big cities. There's actually quite a big chunk here in Texas, South Carolina, North Carolina. Um, I think some of these I've seen before, Florida, New York, some of these we'll get rid of, obviously. And uh, we'll dive into that more so later on. State zip, you know, that's all explained for. Property type, single family, a couple manufactured homes. Uh, if we look at the property type, you do have some mobile homes, some duplexes, mostly single family. You do have a couple condos in here. Um, they gave us the AVM, automated valuation model. What that means is automated valuation model means it's like a Zillow number. It's an online value, not a Duke, that's no, not a BPO. So for the sake of valuation, to speed it up there, they gave us these values of what they're kind of determining without actually paying for things. We would argue once your bid is accepted, then you pay for a BPO, then you dive into the due diligence to take a look at it. Well, they gave a link to take a look at it. All right. Then they calculated uh, as far as the uh, uh, UPB versus the AVM. So you can see most of these are as little as 0%. You know, that's like one that's got like a $600 balance on it, all the way up to um, 101, 103%. So most of these have equity. There's only a couple that don't, okay? Last full payment, you can see most of these are, uh, this. Uh, actually, most of them are all this year. There's a couple that are behind. You see 2024, 2023 is just a couple of 2023. Next payment due dates, they gave us that. The origination date, when these were originated. Uh, the original balance, the escrow indicator, if it's escrowed or not. Escrow means that they're collecting taxes, at least, and in, hopefully insurance. Uh, current P&I payment, that's one thing that we're going to be going back and forth. So I'm going to actually change that one here to green, because I'm going to be going back to that one probably quite a bit. Taxes and insurance, the total P&I, TI payment, okay? And then you've got the last 12 months of payment from February going back. So February, January, December through March of last year, it's the last 12 months. And then what they did is they gave you the payment status. <clears throat> month one, month two, this is like when you see a credit bureau pull stuff, you can see if they're on time. One, one, one means they're on time within 30 days, 30 days, 30 days. It hadn't been paid seven months, okay? They're on time, they made a payment. It's kind of the check system. So this is great, but we really don't need that since we have the 12 months of payments, which is fine, but it's good to know that. It also gives us a calendar date, I mean, in here on AY of the loan modification date, because he's been modified. And then going back to what we talked about before, how about there, there were some issues you see on here, Klein Allonge, Doc Issue 1, um, a lost note affidavit with a copy of a note, loan mods missing, seller AOM missing. There's some things that are missing on here. That'll reduce your, your offering, if you, if you, even if you want to bid on it. Now, there's prior liens, mortgages on this one. It hasn't been cleared off. That's not that too big a deal. And then you come down here, if there's any missing documents, non-real estate loans or missing origination deeds, stuff like that, you can see that some of these, well, none of them has that in there, okay? And then you've got weighted average coupon calculations, the whole thing. And I d don't even know why these are in here. For the most part, you're not going to really bid or do deal deal and solve them. So that's kind of where the tape is at. Okay. Does that make sense so far before I start pulling my best samurai warrior imitation and start slicing and dicing? Yes, no, everybody kind of understanding that aspect of things. The interest rates on some of these are uh, as high as, well, as low as 0.0, it's 3.6%. Um, well, that's really low, up to uh, 15%. So like a 0.3% one. 
which is stupidly low. Obviously, you're probably going to get rid of that one. Okay. Questions here. Don McAlvin. Yep, not, not a bad take. A lot of good information, right? A lot of good information. So what am I going to do? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the columns I really don't need to waste my time with, right? Like in the for the first thing, I think the servicer is not... Is it, what's wrong with my damn mouse now? Of course, my mouse is probably going to go out right now, just as we need to go into that. Give me a second here. Where did it go? Where did it go? Okay. All right. That's just great. My mouse dies just as I'm about to start slicing and dicing. That's awesome. Give me one second, everybody. Hang on here. I'll be right back. I have batteries. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, everybody, but weird. That had to happen just then. And now we're cooking with Crisco. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. What's wrong with this now? There we go. All right. I guess it was saying stop sharing for a second. Zoom acting strange. All right. So let's get into this. All right. So like, like I said, loan number, we'll keep that because it'll be integral in making our offer later on. Servicer, it is a combination of PHL and State Bridge. Don't really care about that. I can always go back and look at those two. I'll delete those off for now. The collateral issue, we'll leave that in there. DQ status, 30 to 59 days. Even that is a little bit off. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that because I don't want the, the, the space on my screen. So we're going to get rid of that. Come on. These are all first liens, so there's no reason to keep that. All right, so there's that. I'm going to actually shrink this down. There we go. All right, so current interest rate, maturity dates, UPBs. Let's go over some of this other stuff that we don't need. Defer property address, we'll obviously need it. Single family, okay, AVM, great. Full payment, escrow indicator, okay, yes. Taxes, insurance, the 12 months, uh, which is good. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these off of here, these months. I just don't need it because I can look at the payment, if they made a payment, and see if they were made a, made a payment. You know what I mean? Delete that off. Okay, what did I just... Oh, did I just do something here? Hang on here. Un undo it. Um, something just went wonky. Actually, I'm just going to... Oh, I know what it is. It's because of this. There we go. I'm just getting ready to collateral deficiency because I can keep that on the far end, that's what was screwing up my spreadsheet. All right, I was doing a wrap text. So, all right, now we're going back over here. EITI, 12 months of payments, yep. All right, we'll try to get rid of these again. Hopefully I don't screw something up. Delete those. There we go. Modification date, doc issue number one, good. All that good stuff. I don't need these. 
All right. So now, all right. So now we're kind of got a clear tape. Makes it easy to see. We're not spending a lot of time going back and forth. All right. So anybody want to take a gander what I would do first? What's the first thing that you would probably do? If you know what you're buying, what's the first place you're probably going to go, right? And you want to throw that up there in the chat roll? Just type it in. You know, what it is, is you're going to go to the States. We're just going to go here. Actually, there we go. Somebody just typed it in there. Get rid of the bad states. Thanks, Dan. Yep. Good job, Lisa. Get rid of the uh, the states I don't buy in. Exactly. Now, one thing we want to do here, if, if you haven't done this already in a tape you get, I always like to go over here and freeze my panes, which means I'm just going to click here on like cell A2. I'm going to go over to view. Uh, come on. View. And it freeze panes. That's going to keep my headers always at the top. When I go down or up, my headers are always at the top, so I know what the column header says, okay? That's an important thing to do. All right, so now, yep, let's, we're going to go over here. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to refilter. You don't really need to do this. You just get rid of stuff, but I always like to resort and make it kind of clean. Okay, so I'm going to make sure, put the whole tape, hit custom sort, and I'm going to ch change it to this. Oh, click on my data has headers. And go down to the state. Do it A to Z. All right, now we have stuff in. What the heck happened here? Borrower names, they get all matched up. Oh, I guess it was already like that in here. Okay, no problem. Oh, yeah, so it was just those are, there's a couple of them that are all matched. Okay, so now we have the states that we like. So Alabama. Alabama, Arizona, one in American Canyon, Colo uh, California, a couple in Colorado, one in Connecticut. We start to see some bunch in Florida there. No, it's about was it six? Some in Georgia. Uh, you know, four in Hawaii, one in Iowa, actually two in Iowa, two in Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas. Um, Kentucky, Louisiana has a bunch, Massachusetts, Maryland, Maine, Michigan. See, that was the surprising that there was only two of these in Michigan. Okay. One in Minnesota, eh? A couple of Missouri, a couple of Mississippi, Montana, North Carolina actually had a pretty good little chunk there. Actually, you North know, Carolina might be the number one state on here. Uh, New Jersey had a couple. New Mexico had a couple. Actually, New this is actually uh, one of the tapes. If you like New Mexico, this is this tape had probably more New Mexico stuff than I've seen in a, in a long time. Okay, mm -hmm. New Mexico, a couple of New York, a um, couple in Ohio, Oregon, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina had a good uh, a few. Tennessee, Texas actually had quite a few in here. If you like the Lone Star State. Texas actually might have been the number one state on this list. <clears throat> yes, which I'll get to that later on. So <clears throat> in Texas, with it being a fast foreclosure state, I don't mind paying a little bit higher percentage because it's got yet lower foreclosure costs because you can foreclose pretty quickly, provided that you've got all the documentation that you need to foreclose. You know what I mean? Texas, Virginia, Vermont, Washington State, West Virginia, and that's it. Surprising there was nothing in Wisconsin on here. Okay. So now, <clears throat> if it had been Wisconsin, I would just delete that because the high property taxes. Now, I don't want anybody to get mad or upset. The states that I'm picking are the ones that we end up buying in most of the time. So I'm always viewing it for mine, the ones that I think there's some opportunity in. That's the states I'm going to choose. No offense to anybody on here. Do not get, well, what about that? Well, what about it? Okay, we're, we're trying to... I'm trying to get the biggest percentage of things out here for people for the most part. I can't be on the one-off aspect of it. That's if you want to review one-off deals, then book a phone call or sign up for a coach. All right. So the states I'm going to pick, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to select all, I'm going to unselect all of them. So the ones I'm going to pick, I'm going to delete off. I can always go back to the master tape and pull stuff up, but the ones I don't want to waste my time on, I just want to get them off. I want to delete them off. I don't want to accidentally hit an unfilter. Um, and some people do that. They'll select only a tape and it condenses it down, but it doesn't delete the states off. So if they select the wrong filter, all the states are back and it screws them up. So you get familiar. Hey, the, the, the PowerPoint, not the PowerPoint, the Excel spreadsheets in my email. It's on my desktop. It's in a file folder. 
It's labeled the master for the date. I can always go back to it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click on the ones. I don't want to waste my time on. I'm not going to waste my time on the ones in Colorado, Connecticut. Connecticut. I'm going to leave Florida in there because I like Florida. Even though it's expensive, it's really not my top five anymore just because of insurance. And now with them coming out and predicting even worse hurricane season, it's probably even more expensive and not be ahead. But I'll leave it there. Hawaii, just too expensive. Iowa, too much corn. Idaho is kind of too much like the rest of the West Coast. California, Oregon, Washington State. I'm just deleting those. It's just too liberal an area, not very uh, investor friendly. Same thing. That's why I'm going to get rid of Illinois right now. Okay, I'm, I'll leave Indiana. I'll leave Kansas, even though Kansas is a judicial state. I'll get rid of Kentucky. I'll get rid of Louisiana. Massachusetts is just too uh, longer foreclosure process. I'll leave Maryland. Maine's too damn cold. Michigan, I'll leave. Minnesota only has that one, so I might as well get rid of it because it's got a one-year redemption period. And remember, these aren't contract for deeds. These are all first liens for the most part. Now, I'm leaving Alabama in there, even though that does have a one-year redemption period, just because we do buy there. We've had some luck. And again, remember, most of these are performing. OK, so most of these are performed. Missouri, I'll leave that there. Mississippi, uh, I'll take a look at it. Montana, kind of too rural. North Carolina, yes. New Jersey, no. New York, no. We will leave New Mexico because it's a non-judicial state. Ohio, I'll leave. Oklahoma, OK. How about those Texas girls beating Oklahoma for the first time in softball in 15 years? That's pretty freaking awesome. Oklahoma, Oregon, we're going to get rid of. Pennsylvania will leave. Rhode Island, no. Nope. Get rid of it. South Carolina will leave. Tennessee will leave. Texas will leave. Virginia will leave. Vermont, no. Washington State, no. West Virginia, too rural. So we're okay. Now that's picked the state. Remember, we had 345 to start with. By getting rid of these. And if you see something in there, hey, no offense, bid on it. If you want to bid on it, go through the things you're more than welcome to. But me, for the most part, I'm getting rid of these. Now, this doesn't mean you can't find a good property. Talk about it, like maybe find investors in Oregon or Washington State. The property looks good. Do a post about it. Share about it. Yeah, by all means, go ahead and do that. I don't have a problem with that. But for me, I'm just going to do that, what I just did. So now I have these states that I like. What? Oh, did I just do scam it all? Okay, let's do this again. Yeah, I got rid of those. Let's select all now. Hit OK. What is going on with my tape here? Oh, because well, that's so strange. It didn't it didn't delete them. It only got rid of some. My tape, what's going on here? Okay, let's try this again, everybody. Maybe I actually let's get rid of blanks. It might have not gone all the way down. That's probably what it did, but it's still left. I don't know. What the heck? I don't understand why the tape is doing it. So let me try this again. We're going to select them all. Undo one more time. Undo. I selected insert instead of delete. Okay. Thanks, Sabri. Thanks. I don't. Okay. So let me just. Um, well, oh crap. I hate when it does that. I just got, uh, give me one second. I'm looking at something here. I want to see if it's still 345 all the way down here. Okay. So, all right. So it's more than that. So let's just get rid of this. Let's just delete these blank columns first and we'll feel comfortable, more comfortable with that. Okay. So here's the thing. Make sure you hit the, make sure you select everything in the filter. leap that's better all right so let's go back in here once again select the states we don't want to buy in colorado connecticut sorry about that everybody iowa idaho illinois kentucky louisiana massachusetts we'll leave maryland in there maine get rid of minnesota uh, montana new jersey new york Oregon, Rhode Island, Vermont, 
Vermont, Washington, West Virginia, hit OK. OK. That looks better. OK, now we're going to get rid of those. Okay, now that should leave us now with, there we go. All right, so now we just got rid of about 104 notes, 104. So that leaves us with 241. Okay, now we're now we're moving. <laughs> All right, question your comments. I'm going to keep, you selected, in, okay. Yeah, I got you. Thank you, bud. Appreciate it. Now let's hit save. All right, so it's save. Great, thank you. All right, now that we have the states that we want, now what's the next thing we want to look at? Well, I like to look at payment, the P&I payment. Remember we highlighted that in green? It's the current P&I payment. All right, so if we look at these, it should, should just select those, anything under 250 a month is what I like to get rid of because it doesn't make any sense for me to keep something. Now, if you're using your own money and you're happy making 100 bucks a month, that's your decision. I'm not going to make that decision for you. But since I'm the one in control tonight, I'm getting rid of anything that has payments less than $250 a month. Just not really worth it. I mean, even with a, uh, only if you even only have a $15 to $25 a month uh, servicing per month, that's great. But it's still hard to end up, they start missing something. You know what I mean? 232. All right. So everything in that. So all these are on here now. I have less than 250 months. So we're going to delete those off. Okay. We delete those rows. Okay. So now selecting all these should be 250 or greater. Now we're at 213. So we got rid of 30 some odd. Okay. All right, let's make sure these are all dollar amounts too. That's better. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go over to balances. What's the the um, UPB if it's low? Well, we'll go to U, um, payoff legal balance on this deferred UP uh, est estimated payoff amounts. Okay, so we're going to resort it, custom sort. Smallest to largest. Okay, so you can see estimate payoff 1126, 1700. I really don't want to waste my time on these small balances. Once again, if you're using your own money, you're more than welcome to. Actually, some of these small balances would work really well for an IRA or an ESA of some sort to put money to work at small balances. Totally. And if you were to make a double digit return, why not? Right. But I usually will just get rid of anything below 25,000 payoff. It just doesn't make sense in a lot of cases to go that low. So we're going to get rid of 67 of these things. Just low balances just doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay. All right. So now that leaves us with payoffs that are 25 grand or more. Now it's taking it down to 145 notes. Okay. <clears throat> so let's go over now to the values. Remember, we had the values. So let's resort it, custom sort. AVM value in link and smallest to largest. Okay. We're going to go over here now. And see, most of these are over $50,000, except the one in South Carolina. It's at 49749 Okay, we've already gotten rid of a bunch of stuff off there anyway because of the low UPB, which is fine. So lower balance is 50, greater and above. We'll leave that in there because that one's in South Carolina and um, in Ward. I don't know where that's at, but guess what? It's on a main street in Ward, South Carolina. The payments hit, okay. So there you go. Now there's some things that we want to do. Okay, now... I could go in here and do another step. Uh, Excel has a nice little tool where you can actually go and put in and put the zip and go over and find the zip um, or, you know, the occupancy of every zip. And, and you do that. I don't know how to do that. I know Jessica showed me how to do that once. I'll get back later. Don't need that right now. 
Um, that's a little bit further for more of your due diligence. Because people, when you start getting into those areas, if you have familiarity with an area, great. If you don't have familiarity, stay the hell out of it. And that natural thing is done by looking like, do I know where Ward, South Carolina is? No, so it wouldn't be a deal for me. I'd get rid of it. But if you know where Ward and it's a decent deal for you, you're comfortable with that, great. Okay, Mission, Texas, people don't know that's down the valley. I would buy Mission, Texas all day. Okay, Las Vegas. Well, that's Las Vegas, Nevada, not or, uh, New Mexico, not Las Vegas, Nevada. So it's a little bit rural area. But anyway, so now, now that we've got basically out of this bunch, we've eliminated so much. We're now down to 145 notes. We've gotten rid of 200 notes in just a few minutes, provided that, hey, we didn't have a battery die on us. <laughs> so now we have kind of a decent list there, kind of okay. Um, we could, if you didn't like mobile homes, you could go in here and get rid of mobile homes too. If you want to do the property type killer, uh, let's do that real fast. So manufactured home, manufactured home, mobile home, and let's see where those are. Look, see, it's only uh, it's only six. Mount Olive, North Carolina, Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina. Well, four of them are in North Carolina, and one in Ashland City, Tennessee, and valleys all over. So we'll leave those because I actually do have a buyer for that stuff in Tennessee. And I, like Winston Salem has been a pretty good area. Um, doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad Roanoke Rapids. I know that area, Mount Olive, North Carolina. So we'll leave those in there for right now because they're too, in most of the stuff. So let's go over here, and start calculating some numbers. Okay. Um, let's go. Let's see here. There was one number. Uh, let's make sure they all have equity. I think they all do. Remember, there was that. Here we go. The current that's interest rate. And there was a column that showed the percentage to value. There we go. AVM to LTV. Okay, let's see the ones that said they were 100%. Where they owe more. Okay. One and three, 101, and then 85. Okay. It's just these two. Okay, well, let's look at these real fast. You know what? For Memphis and Baltimore... We'll leave those in there because they don't make that big a difference. Those values could be uh, all the way off. It may not be 65 or 60, you know, 65 each. We'll just leave those in there for basic due diligence on the front. So those are two major cities. That's fine. Okay, so now, okay, good. I'm actually pretty happy with this. Now, what I like to do, there's something I haven't really gone through. Now, let's go. Th you know, one thing we've done before, you've got the current P&I payment, right? So you know what I like to do. Let's go in here, hit insert. And let's figure our 12 months of what a 12 month payment, if they paid on time for 12 months with just what they're supposed to pay, what does that look like? So I'll label that column 12 months, P and I. Okay. And what am I going to do? I'm going to hit equals to go over in 295.89 times 12 months. That's 3550. I'm going to copy that formula all the way down. Perfect. Now, what's great in here, remember I said this earlier, remember the remember the 12 months of payments? So what I like to do next is I'm going to insert a column. And I'm going to put uh, rolling 12 cash flow. What have they totally paid in the last 12 months? So I'm going to equals equals sum, open parentheses, go over and highlight February and highlight all the way over to March of last year. Close parentheses and hit enter. Now this one shows me that this bar made $3,884 in payments over the last 12 months. They paid a little bit extra because their payments just 300 or they're a little short by a couple bucks, which is okay because 12 months times 300 should be 3,600. So I'm gonna copy that, control C and copy that formula all the way down. All right, I'm going to go ahead and anything that I change or tweak or more so insert, I'm going to highlight in green because it's something I'm going to use as a calculation. All right, this making sense over everybody. You kind of, so the numbers I've gone is what with the 12 months, 12 month uh, P&I payment, just P&I, not P-I-T-I, what they should have paid. And then I've also said rolling 12 cash flow, what they have paid. We've got a good history of what they have paid. Now I'm going to insert one more column in here. And we can also like to rank in here. You could do a couple of things. 
you could take uh, this number and divide it by their P and I payments to figure out the number of payments total they've made, or you could take the twelve months and div uh, divide that by, I mean, take the the rolling twelve cash flow, divide that twelve months to figure the percentage. If they paid one hundred percent or over percent, I like the months after. How many months have they paid? Okay, so let's do uh, how many months paid last twelve. Okay. So what I do, either way, how I mean, if you're more comfortable, this person's made 50% of what they're supposed to make, or they've paid 110% more than whatever, you know, or they've made, I know it's 12 months, so they paid higher than 12. I know they paid extra for the last 12 months. Okay, Either way, you're fine. Whichever calculation, I like months. Some people like percentages. The reason I put months in here, so it gives me a little bit. Thing. Either way, you can rank it, it's going to be fine. There's no right or wrong to that, Okay. So I'm gonna do um, is equal to 3884 divided by what their minimum payment is. And that shows me that this one, this person, this is a, um, we wanna copy that all the way down. Not $13.13, I gotta rechange the, the format of this column. And so this column, I'm gonna change the format of the cells to a dollar amount, to a number, not a dollar amount. Okay, so now, now you can see that this borrower on this one has paid 13 months. They paid a little bit extra. This one paid 11. This one paid 12. This one paid 16. This one's only paid two months. Okay, that's not really performing. Okay, because at the end, before we make our, our, our final offers, we're going to go back and take a look at it. Like this one, What's this is the thing that aggravates the shit out of me. This literally pisses me off more than anything else. Okay. So the seller, what did the seller say? Oh, these are performing notes and, you know, 30, 60, 90 days behind. Well, this one is not 90 days behind. It's a lot longer behind. They've only made based technically two payments. They made one double payment in January. That's all they've made a payment. They didn't make anything before that. So I actually don't like this one. This is a non performer. I'm going to bid as non-performing. I don't care if they made a payment a month ago. They should have made another payment in February. Now, of course, yes, they may have made two payments, but they didn't make anything before that. For you to be a performing, a performing note or a re-performing note, okay? A performing note, you're not going to buy at a discount. The banks are going to get. So these were all non-performing, I believe, at some point. They've been paying on time. So for it to be reconsidered a performing, you need to have 12 months of, of payments, 12 months and 12 months or more, okay? Six months if they six months or more if they put a big chunk down, like six months ago where they brought a big chunk to the table, okay, and they've made two or three payments in a row, great. That's considered kind of performing for me. Somebody just made two months of payment, but if they only made two payments in, in a year, that's not performing. As you got one payment out and you actually screwed yourself up by accepting that payment, now it reset the clock. Now let reset the statute of limitations or the default clock. If you accepted the payment, guess what? You can't foreclose. They're not 90 days behind. You, you've got to start that 90-day period again if you buy. So that's the thing to keep in mind. I'm not a fan of that. That one I dislike. I'd almost delete it off the tape right off the bat. Let's see, you know, where is it located? If it's in Texas, okay, I can, uh, not uh, Lauren, Laurenburg, North Carolina. I know where that's at. It's not so bad. Not the biggest of areas, but hey. I know something that might be interesting, but North Carolina's a relatively faster foreclosure. Yeah, see, they haven't made any payments at all. They made one double payment. No, that's not a performing note. That's a non-performing note. So don't let that 30, 60, 90 day thing come in mind. Now, when did they say on this one, going over here, uh, next payment due March 9th, last full payment. See, this thing here would be tricky for you. If you just had that, Oh, they're only 30 days behind. Well, no, 12 months, they, ha they, they haven't. They have See, oh, that's why I like the 12 months of cash flow because I could literally go over here and say, who's made, you know, run a number, who's made the most payments and we'll be sitting pretty, right? Which is something to think about doing. So let's do that. Actually, that's actually what makes sense to do. Let's now resort it. I like the whole thing, custom sort. and change it to how many months paid? Last 12, largest to smallest. So now, what do you see? Well, like this guy, you're know, looking right off the bat, this one's made 62 months. Well, their payment's only 
271, but they brought $10,000 to the table and they made another $1,000 a month. That one is worth looking at, right? That one's got some motivation. Same thing with this one, made 17,400, made another $2,400 payment in January. This person's motivated to stay. Their p and payment is just 541. Haven't made a payment in February, but maybe they did in March. We don't know that, okay? But you see how that comes in handy? Yep, you know, so then you start getting down to these down here that are below 12 months. I will really look at anything, you know, if it's below 12 months, uh, I want to see something at least six months. Well, these are eight, eight, nine. Okay, they're starting to get back on track. But these down here, they made a thousand payment. They're two months in a row. That's not that's non-performing. It's not really all the way on track yet. And the same thing with this one we just showed at. So we will leave it in there, but it's that's potentially foreclosure. Now, this one is what concerns me, this eight months. They haven't made a payment in the last 90 days. You know, they were on time there. Then what the hell happened to that borrower? Okay. All right. So let's go back. Now that we've got that in there, let's start figuring out ROI. So that's the next thing that we look at. What's going to be the best ROI for us if we buy these notes going forward? It's, you know, we can't calculate, oh, that they paid 12 grand two months ago. That doesn't go to us. That's going to the seller, right? We have to look at basically now going forward. What's the possibility? That's why we go back in and put the current P&I payment in for 12 months to get a big idea of that. Now, since most of these all have equity, right? There's only those two that are basically borderline 101, 103. So we're just going to treat these all as a tape with equity. Okay. So now we're going to go over here to the payoff mount. Okay. And change that to yellow. We're going to insert a column. And since these all have substantial 20% equity or greater above the legal balance, most sellers are going to want roughly around 80% of legal balance. That's probably where they want us to bid at, okay? So then it's really easy to just go equals estimate payoff times 0 0.8, okay? And that number, you'll just copy that formula all the way down. Boom, shakalaka. You got your rough bids. And now, if we know what the bid is, we got to figure our ROI, what they we're looking for. Some would say this is their floor price. This is the reserve bid. Now, that's not taking into consideration the, the file deficiencies. And I'll go through that in a minute, okay? I'll go through that in a second. Because you're going to reduce your bid 80% if it's clean paper, okay? Clean paper means all the collateral files there, values match up. But there's collateral issues. You may want to, depend on what it is, you may want to deduct 10, 15, 20% from it based on that aspect of things, okay? Most people don't know how to bid that. If it's got a lost don't have a David and it's got a copy of thing, eh, it's still pretty good to me. I'll take the discount though and go from there. It's not a, a do or die. If there's a missing uh, AOM, okay, I'll reduce it by a, a little bit and go from there. So here's the thing to look at. Now what we're going to do is figure our estimated insert our estimated um, ROI. If we bid at 80, what's the cash flow for 12 months look like if um, they just start keep paying on time, right? And we're gonna change this to a green column because it's green, it's money, money, money. Might as well do that too. All right, so now what we do is we're gonna do equals. We're gonna go over to our 12 months p &I payments and divide that by the 80% of payoff for legals, okay? That should give you roughly this whole column should be a percentage number. And we're going to do this to two terms. Two, all right, so hit Control-C and copy that formula all the way down now. Now... There you go. Now, this should help you figure out which ones have the most amount of ROI, provided that you buy it 80% and the cash flow comes in. Now, there's a couple of things on here we need to get rid of, okay? There's the terms. I didn't talk about this. The terms, okay? So anything that's got a shorter term, you know, I say, you know, really less than 15 years, it's gonna, most of the payment's gonna be more principal than interest. So you're gonna be very careful about when you borrow money from an investor, 
Like I'll give you an example. Let's say you borrow 25 grand from an investor and the note uh, balance is 30. Well, you got to make sure based on the payment history and where you're at, where are they at in that amortization? Because if the bar keeps coming and making their PI, uh, principal and interest payments, that UPB is going to get knocked down some, right? 30, go from 30,000 to 29,775, whatever it might be. But your interest only payments to your investor, the investor still owes 25. So you want to make sure that you're not buying a note where that three year or four year period or in that the, the three years you plan to hold this performing note, that the payoff legal balance doesn't drop below what's owed. It still gives you the cushion. If you need to sell it, you can sell that note to somebody else to make sure you get 25 grand back to your investor. They're happy. You got your cash flow for a period of time. And maybe the investor buys you out. There's a possibility. You know, or instead of selling that note to an investor, bringing it in and splitting cash flow, maybe you find investors that want to take this over and you get a wholesaling fee. For them to buy a note that's going to pay them for seven or eight years, something like that. Okay. Me, if you're using other people's money, you want to make sure I like to say that I prefer a 10 year term of payments the longer. I actually prefer 15, but I'll look at 10. Okay. Anything below 10, you got to be really careful because stuff can get paid off pretty fast. If it's amortized right. Okay. So, like, if you look at the maturity dates on some of these. All right. So, let's go here and re rank these custom sort. I'll go back to the uh, interest rate here custom sort. Maturity dates. Um, newest to oldest. Okay. So the, you see these maturity dates are old, like 60, 60, you know, 2063. That's another th almost 39 years. You know, it'll be turning 100 when that person pays off. <laughs> okay. But coming down here, this is where you can get rid of like this one. Jose Rodriguez, he was supposed to pay in December. He only owes 19. I mean, I've seen this note before. He owes 46, UPB's 19. This one is in far Texas. Yeah, it's been around for a while. Okay. Um, he's making, is he making payments? No, this is one where he's only made two months of payments, if I remember correctly. Oh no, he's made he made 12 months of payments. He was behind for a while and he's back on track. Okay, that's not bad. He's made 11 months of payments, 11.76, almost 12. So that's not so bad. You just got to look at, okay, what's remaining? How many more payments does he have on that to figure that out, right? If you don't, if, you know, and making sure to look at that. So that's not so bad. Um, this one, 2024, 2025, these start to get kind of very, you have to be very careful about this because this is, so I'm going to go down here and really, since it's 2024, I'm going to get, if I go back up here to 34, so it's 10 years from now, roughly, that's where these, These numbers are more for, let's do this. Um, let's turn these into kind of the pink aspect. Those are more peachy for wholesaling to somebody and making two, three, five grand. Whereas the rest of these with this term up here may not be too bad, right? Uh, the, oh, yeah, one thing I forgot to do is we have our ROIs here now, right? Look at these ROIs, okay? Some of these don't make sense. So let's look at these estimated ROIs and keep the ones we want to keep and get rid of the ones that are cheaper. So really, the estimated ROIs that we want to keep are what? If you're using other people's money for these, we really want to get rid. Let me just do this. Um, hit save. File save as. Three forty-five cleaned um, with uh, wholesale peach. I know I can wholesale off make it. If that makes sense. I'm just my own internal aspect of things, right? So we saved that. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to get rid of these wholesale ones with a low term. So just don't probably not going to make a lot of aspect make a lot of sense. But it's going to get rid of the stuff that I don't need to waste my time with. I mean, it could always. You know, flip a few here. And some are going to be pretty good ROIs, right? They're going to look good because the payments, it, it's, it's, but that is going to actually kind of steer you wrong. Okay, so now that's better. Now we have these left. So let's go back over here now and custom sort it now. Estimated ROI. Largest to smallest. And now we have the ones that we want to spend our time with. We've got rid of the ones that have low terms. Lower values. The only thing that really we haven't looked at on these is what? 
I know you're like, what did we talk about? Basically the size of the city. Okay. The size of the city is the next thing that we look at. But for the most part, we now have, if we look at anything really above 15%, we've identified, or if you got somebody that's willing to go 7% with you, you know, 7 to 14, there you go. You got 45 notes to bid on. The other are really kind of skinny. Especially if these are all, you know, these 5%, 6%. These are lower interest rate terms. Not really worth looking at. Now, if you're happy making 8% on your money, then all by all means, let's look at these. Okay. Uh, West Texas, that's just up I-35 here. Okay. Uh, let's see, Winston-Salem, that's Page Street. Far Texas is far out there. El Paso, uh, Aquasco, Maryland. San Antonio, Texas, I looked at that's at 10.7. Now that's, you know, these are all basically paying on time. The, it's pretty simple on these because none of these are really, um, are going to be a foreclosure aspect. If they did foreclose, let's look at the numbers on here. 8% of legal. Let's run another, let's just insert another no, number in here. Okay. Let's just say if you foreclosed, uh, let's say uh, equity dollar amount above um, 80% legal or your offering. Because your offering would basically, based on this, making this, this is your offering right here 8% of legal offering amount, if the numbers worked out right. Okay. Okay, so, but let's figure out what a dollar, if you had to foreclose, we still want to make sure that we're in a, a chunk of profit. They stop paying, what's that profit look like, right? So if we go here, it's just going to be basically your legal balance minus your offer. Dollar amount. And that's going to be, that's, now, some of these people have been paying more than 12 months. They're pretty invested in the property. You're not going to likely foreclose on them. Does that make sense, everybody? Somebody's making over 12 months of on-time payments and they're doing well, great. So that's where you're going to look at the two. So hit control C and copy this all the way down. All right, so that's where you look at this now. Like, okay, so give you an example. Let's, let's just look at this one. So this bar were in Jacksonville, Alabama. All right. They only owe 31. If you made 80%, that's 25. They're... They've made 12 months of on-time payments, which is, big, yeah, 12 months of on-time payments. Basically, they've been on time, made a payment. They made a double payment. You know what I mean? Okay, pretty good. Now, let's look over here. Subject SE1 unrecorded, loan file missing. Subject mortgage not recorded. That loan file missing can be a doozy. Here's the thing I would ask. Do they have any collateral file? They, what do they have? They have a scanned copy because they don't have a physical copy. That's okay in some cases. All right. But if they don't have a physical copy. Do they have scanned copy of it? Subject mortgage, mortgage not recorded. Do they have a copy of the mortgage note that we can get re-recorded? Okay. Because if this bar is paying on time and they've been on time, there's no need to rock the boat. Because if you buy this one, And they keep making payments on time. They don't mature till 2035. That's the, you know, that's the newest one. But you're basically getting a 31%, 34% cash and cash return. What do you think? You like it? Don't like it. Let's just, now this is where you can get into like looking at the property. So let's look at that one first. Okay. Copy that. Let's go over here. I know I need to share my screen in just a second. Hang on, everybody. Oh, yeah, I looked at this one yesterday. All right, look at this. This is 324 Dennis in Jacksonville. Yeah, I mean, I looked at this one yes, uh, yeah, yesterday. Jacksonville, Alabama. This picture is from 2022, March of 2022. So what do you see with it? It's a decent looking two story. Got a new metal roof on the thing. It, the neighborhood looks very similar to that. You know, there a lot of them are all those two story kind of tri, uh, by levels. New roof. That person wants to stay in there. Okay, so I would probably go that route. Now, if there's 
with a file missing, I would probably drop it down 10%. I wouldn't offer 80% of legal. I would probably go back to 70% and make my, make my offer that. So that 25, maybe 20 with that in mind. Okay. I'd have to take a look. What do they have copies of? All right. Hang on a second here. All right, guys, with that, I have to wrap it up. I got a bit of a, um, I have to wrap it up. I've got a bit of an emergency. I got to take care of the family. So, uh, but anyway, that's kind of where we would go. If you're in the base kit group, I'll upload this for you, this file to take a look at and you make your offers on it. But that's kind of the thing to take a look at. All right, everybody. I, I, unfortunately, I've got to run and uh, got a bit of a family emergency. Hope you enjoyed that. Have a great evening and we'll see you guys later. All right, bye.